few days ago, I recorded an interview with Professor Evey from Blinn College, who's been a long time user of games in his classroom. I felt like what he's done and how he's approached using games in his classroom is really valuable and should be shared with everybody. Unfortunately, the interview was recorded in Zoom, and the quality, the video quality, is not really um, that great. And I wasn't going to put it on the channel and planning to refilm the interview at better quality. But it was suggested to me that um, I should put it on regardless and have you leave comments if you want a higher quality video or not because the feedback I've received so far, these conversations, these interviews are really valuable um, to people. They rather have a low quality video and the content available to them than not have the content available and wait to um, we reshoot it on higher quality. So with that, here's a video I've recorded um, with Professor E.B couple of weeks ago. Um, please leave comments down below um, if you'd like a higher quality video. Also do not forget if you like um, the video please like it and subscribe to the channel. It will help us a great deal and tell us what you'd like to hear. Um, let us know what kind of content you'd like to see. Who should we invite um, to come and speak to that we can learn from. I hope you enjoy this video. Here we go. Professor E.B. from Berlin College, who's been using a video game as part of his classes for several years. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Rob? Uh, so I'm Rob E.B., as Andre said. Uh, been at Blinn College for, oh, I guess about 20 years now. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> sure doesn't seem like it some days. And um, yeah, it's so funny story, right? So Blinn, uh, the campus that I'm on is maybe 10 miles from the headquarters of Tricium, but it took us going to a conference in Denver for us to realize that, oh, we existed with each other. It's kind of one of those funny moments that happens. And um I've always been looking, I have a lot of calculus courses, so I've always been looking for any sort of way to engage the students, in particular because uh, we're next door, my campus is basically next door to Texas A&M, and a lot of my students have had calculus before. So they come in, they think they know calculus, and I wanted some ways to engage them in a non-traditional kind of way to, to sort of force them to think about calculus and to realize that, oh, wait, I, I might have taken a class, but I don't really know everything about calculus. I really need to, to study and do the work. And so this was a natural fit. Plus, I've, I've grown up as a kid of the 80s playing video games forever. So this was really exciting to me. Um, and then so I, I demo, piloted it kind of in one class, and then I've been using it ever since. Um, they're they're <clears throat> a variant limits game. Um, and then if you're, uh, I am pretty active in AMATIC, the Math Association for Two-Year Colleges. I'm also a member of the MAA. Um, and then um, on math Twitter too, if you're on Twitter, so. Well, thank you, Rob. Um, really appreciate it. Now you already started sharing with us how you, how you found the games that uh, you've been now using for several years. And kind of walk us through the journey a little bit you mentioned uh, a lot of students already took calculus. They come and see you, and you want to engage them. What, what's the reason behind that? Why, why engage them? What's and um, what's the driver? Uh, well, so so several things, and part of this is just as, as I've grown as a professor and teacher too. At first, I would realize that they wouldn't. Um, several of the students who thought they knew calculus wouldn't do homework or really pay attention in class. They just kind of, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll ace the test, whatever. And then I'd ask the question on the test. Um, and especially if I asked a kind of a non-standard class question, so sort of out of the, the Hughes-Hallett applied calculus stuff, if you're familiar with the reform calculus stuff or, or other things like that. Um, and it would really kind of slap the students around. And of course, I didn't like that. I want the students to succeed. My admin didn't like that because, of course, the students would go complain to, 
Um, and so, and so I just was starting and talking up and down the hallway. Okay, how do I do this? And so I started having them, um, you know, one thing I do is I have them write memos in class, as in partners, um, do some other things. Um, and then when I came upon this video game, it was like, oh, this is great because it's, uh, if you've never seen the demo of the game or the video or anything, it's, it's a, I mean, once you see it and you catch it, you're like, oh yeah, this makes, this makes great sense what they're doing. But at first pass, it's, it's not at all immediately ob obvious to most students about how this connects with the limit from the left, limit from the right stuff that you see in a more formal setting in the classroom. Um, and so I thought this was a great way to get the students to really sort of not only just engage with the material early on, so they're used to the mindset of, hey, I got to do the work to succeed, but also to really start thinking about calculus in a, a variety of contexts, because ultimately, um, I mean, I'm just old enough that when I went to school, we were still kind of had slide rules running around and very cheap calculators <laughs> yes. and overhead projectors, and nobody's using a slide rule anymore, and heck, half the people aren't using calculators, using some sort of web tool. Um, and so I've always been interested in how do I really make the concepts nailed down because, because techniques will change over time, but if they can really grasp the concepts and how they apply in a variety of circumstances, that's really what they need. And so um, this was sort of a natural way into this, um, not to mention a lot of them really like video games. The, you know, the moment I say, hey, this is a calculus video game, and it's not just a cheap educational game where you walk up to the door of the dungeon and solve this problem to open the door. It's a real game. <laughs> They're very interested. Um, and so any sort of way to get the students excited about learning was always fun for me. And so that's, that was, the, those are the primary motivators for doing this for me. Excellent. Thank you. Now, before you encountered the video game and used it, did you look at other materials like um, movies or um, board games, card games, or um, music or other ways that, that may also um, um, it could be used? Yeah, so, I, so I tried some video clips. The, the problem that I found was either um, at that time, at least, of course, you know, many years ago, was that a lot of the clips were either too long or too short. <laughs> so they're either like a one minute just work an example problem, which is not what I really wanted, or they were a 25, 30 minute lecture on content material. Um, and so I was trying to hit a sweet spot of like a four to five minute here's a weird or interesting calculus concept or idea. How do you, where, how does this apply? Where does this fit in the semester? Um, and so then, um, yes, I've, I've got a uh, derivative matching game where you have a graph of a function, a derivative, and a second derivative, and you shuffle them up and they got to match the cards, um, kind of a card sort thing. And there's, there's other ways now you can do that electronically, but early on I'd done that. Um, and I've been trying to think of other things. Of course, there's, there's always that balance of time you only have so much time in the classroom, so much time the semester, they have other classes going on. So there's always a little bit of that going on. Um, right now I'm doing escape rooms as a review day, which uh, another sort of game scenario thing. Um, yeah, I, I thought about board games, but I could just never come up with a good, well, it, you know, to get it structured right in the play testing and balanced and all that stuff, I could just never come up with a reasonable, uh, I kept going, going back into my mind to where, I might as well just give them extra problems or an extra quiz at this point. I can't quite get it right. And that, maybe that was just, you know, my lack of design or whatever skills. Um, I could just never seem to pull that off. So, um, but then, yeah, with the, the sort of an immersive video game came in, this was, this was great for, for me. And most of my students who've played it have also said the same thing. Yeah, this was cool. This was great. So. Okay. Now, when you use a game as part in the class, there's a people out there that say like, well, you know, it's, it takes this specific game, variant limits, it takes students on average six to eight hours um, to complete. Now, some faculty would say that, oh, well, that's way too much time. I can't assign homework or work um, to students that takes that long. Where others would say, it doesn't matter how long it takes, it's about the mastery. And if a student can master something in two hours and another 
takes 20 hours, where then we should allow them the time. Where do you sit on that time? Because you just mentioned the, the time students may spend on that. How, how do you view that? Um, so I actually, uh, the first day of class, after running through the syllabus, I bring up that, okay, hey, here's this option. Um, and it's, it's an option because of some various state laws and some other things here in Texas. So I can't require it, um, but I make it an option and explain what's up um, and have a couple of set some benchmarks that, okay, if you want the full credit, you got to hit this level on the game. If you want 80% credit, you got to hit this level on the game. Um, and I say, okay, it's going to take you roughly this much time, but if you don't want to play the game or you don't want to pay for the game, because you know college student finances, I get it. Um, then I have alternative assignments that are about equal in terms of time to work. In ter uh, I have a we use an online homework system, so I set up a big quiz and some other stuff in that. Um, and so then I dial back other things that I would ask in terms of online homework and stuff like that. So I basically kind of sat down and said, okay, through all the first tests, how much time am I expecting them out of class to work? Okay, so if I, you know, 18 hours or so, all right, so knock six off of that means, okay, where do I shuffle some other things around, right? Because in theory, you're supposed to work twice as, twice as much time out of class as in class. And so, <laughs> um, and so that's, that's how I balance it. I just say, okay, by, the, by more or less when the first test rolls around, this is when you have to have it finished. I offer reminders as we go. And then, so that gives the students two to th uh, two and a half weeks or so to finish it. So they got a couple of weekends. They got plenty of time to do it kind of on their own. Um, and a lot of students, even before COVID, but especially now, really like the sort of flexibility of that, that they can fit it around other things that are going on, whether it's a chemistry lab or uh, all the, welcome, uh, you know, first of the semester stuff that's going on. And then, um, yeah, and I always tell them that you've got to fall back. And if you really just completely stuck on a puzzle, you know, do what you always do for everything else. Ask your buddies, ask me, <laughs> we'll start talking through it together. And usually it's a case if they just miss something or whatever. Um, occasionally they just, ah, I just got to a point where I was just banging my head. I just, I just didn't. So I just went and did the alternative assignment. Okay. Um, but yeah, so there's a time consideration. I have to kind of count the hours for that. Um, but I just sort of offload that out of the classroom time into the student's time. And I, I tend to use the classroom time much more for the, the quote unquote harder stuff, right? Because the, the drill problems, especially with online homework and pre-recorded videos, that can, they can all do that ahead of class or, or catch up on their own. But uh, okay, hey, when the surgeon talks about getting close enough with the needle to be able to inject the drug for the chemo into the tumor, how does that apply to limits, right? That's, that's a harder concept for students to wrestle with at first. And so that's where the classroom time comes in because that's where I can better guide the students in that sort of thing. Or when I... Um, put up three different scenarios and say, okay, how do these all relate to each other? What's the common question, limit question or continuity question or whatever between all these three? <laughs> Excellent, well, thank you. Now you, you mentioned that you started off with piloting and now you have a system um, with alternative assignments and where the students can play the video game or do an alternative assignment and you actually already mentions as some kind of based on how much they play, that's how much credit they get. Can you kind of walk us through your journey when you first piloted, how you use it and the different methods of implementing the game into your classroom um, you've tried so far? Sure. So the first thing was, uh, right, I knew how, how long it roughly it took me to get through it, but of course <laughs> I should be much faster than the students. <laughs> So, um, and I also wasn't sure, um, like a lot of things when you first try it, I wasn't sure how the students were going to respond. So I actually pilot, we have an a, a engineering calculus or calculus one, part of this calculus sequence class. We also have a applied calculus or business calculus class. And so I actually piloted it in both of them. Now for my 
business calculus class, what I did was I used it at the end of the semester as a review heading into the final exam as a way to review limits. Um, and I just kind of gave them the option and I said, okay, here and hey, take some notes for me, kind of keep a, I mean, I, I can see on the instructor portal how long you spent on the game, but take some notes for me about, okay, yeah, this, this stuff really seemed to help or make sense. It ties back to stuff we've covered. This stuff just, I don't see where this connects at all sort of thing. And I asked both classes to do that. And the applied calculus class, for the most part, it, it really wasn't helping them that much. It didn't seem to be even, I mean, my, my one super A student got it, but my B's only sort of got it. My C's were just, they just didn't get it. Um, because admittedly in that class, we don't spend a ton of time on limits anyway and stuff. We're, we're moving into real quickly some other things. Um, so I just kind of said, okay, that class is just probably not going to work or it's going to be, I've got other things to focus on. But on my uh, engineering calculus side, um, when I piloted a lot of the students really, one, they're more, more they're mostly engineers, so they're more into those sorts of things anyway. Um, but two, um, they're more enthusiastic about, you know, hey, this is, this is kind of cool. Yeah, I see this connection. I see this connection. And anecdotally, um, what, what really kind of sealed it for me was we were out in the hallway before, waiting, you know, for the, the previous class to get out of the classroom. They were having a test, I think, so they're taking a little longer. No big deal. Um, and several of the students had their laptops out. We're playing the game <laughs> right, right there in the hallway. And um, it's like, all right, well, they're out. It's about time to go. And one of the students was like, oh, no, I've almost got this puzzle solved. Can we, can we now start class? Do I solve the puzzle? Wait. <laughs> and, which, well, okay, great. The, the student wants to learn calculus, you know. So um, that was kind of the moment it clicked that, okay, for a lot of these students, this is really, I mean, this was the student that was, that was bored to tears and just always, ah, oh, I hate limit quizzes. I hate, blah you know um but then suddenly there, here is a hook um and and so i, I kind of like i said i piloted it in and, and got it and looked at averages for students about how long they're spending on each one and, and it was fairly obvious a couple of times where you know 27 hours i said did you just accidentally leave yourself logged in a couple of times oh yeah i might have i fell asleep playing one night <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so i knew it wasn't really 27 hours there um so i, I ended up piloting a little bit um, I had the luxury to do that, so I, I made it an extra credit kind of a thing, or a, and then I settled into, again, because of the state laws about what we can and can't require and some other things, um, settled into my current frame where it's either play the game or do these optional assessment sort of a things. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of ran the gamut of, okay, do this, um, and I have some quizzes in class that... Um, tie so it takes a screenshot from the game and then takes a, a quote-unquote standard looking problem and says okay what's the connection so which of these standard questions would apply to this particular screenshot sort of a thing um, and that way so everybody is in a sense getting the benefit and for even the students who aren't playing the game I, I tend to let the students use their classmates when they're working on quizzes anyway in class group quizzes and so they'll tell me, oh, wait, what's this going on? Well, how does this work? And, and so then the students have the benefit of having to explain it to somebody else, right? And so then, then that's where the, really the mastery sort of kicks in. Um, but it, it was a process. Yeah, it was a couple of two to three semesters before I really had it kind of dialed in about how much to weight it. So it's roughly half a test grade or so. How to fit it, where the time frame, when does it need to be due, that sort of a thing. Um, so, yeah, I basically had to just kind of step out and say, okay, am I willing to do this and admit to the students, hey, we're going to try this and this may blow up in our faces and we'll deal with it, but let's, let's try this. Does this sound cool? And they're like, yeah, this sounds cool. And, you know, it didn't, that one didn't blow up. I have tried some other things that definitely blew up in my face. Uh, um, but I've, I've found that for most students, if you're up front with them and you tell them, okay, hey, I want to try this to help you learn the material better and also make it not boring, but fun. Will y'all work with me? Most students will work with you if you do that. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, when you say alternative assignment, is that a um, still an extra credit assignment or is it actually- uh, oh, no, 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 so, 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 it's, so it's a required assignment. Okay. And it's either 
play the game to these standards or do these other things in our online homework system with the, the couple of quizzes and a summative assessment test gotcha. sort of thing. Um, but as I said, I, I give it as, I call it an alternative because they're not required to play the game. Yeah. There is an alternative to playing the game, but no, it's absolutely required in my class. Cause in my experience, if my students, if I don't make it for a grade on some form or fashion, they're not going to do it <laughs> until the end of the semester when they all want mounds of extra credit. But <laughs> Yes, yes. No, I've, I've seen the same thing over and over again. That uh, when you make it for extra credits, that usually only your top students will do the extra credit, but not your your C um, students, those that, that really need it until the last minute when they're realizing, oh my God, I have to fail. Can can I do something? Uh, and so uh, several faculty now actually doing exactly what you're doing is saying, okay um you have the two options right play the game or do an alternative assignment um because we think about video games and students love playing video games but if you give them an educational game no matter how good it is they don't really want to play that they want to play an entertainment game right and so if you give them the option play or play not most of them will not play other than your A students who are gonna take any opportunity to do some extra work. But if you say, well, play or do X, then um, what, what we've seen seems to be, you know, really helping. And, and some students say, okay, no, I don't wanna play. I'd rather do the traditional homework assignments. And others, uh, I heard from one faculty, um, she uses an art history game. They're like, okay, well, read a text and then write a paper about it where a student actually came to us, like I was doing the text and then somehow I wanted to just try out the game and ended up playing the game and said, this was, she learned so much more, just that interactive um, side of it, playing the game than from reading the text and, and writing the paper about it. Um, so that's really good to hear. What are some tips and tricks or, you know, you could offer to other um, faculty, teachers that are thinking about bringing games into their classroom? Um, well, so as I said earlier, don't be afraid to fail, <laughs> um, it, which is a little weird, right? Because we're used to being an expert. And so it's a little scary to stand up and say, okay, well, we're going to try this and this may not work at all very well. Um, and again, I've, I've found that most of the time, if you just uh, out front with students say, okay, you know, hey, I, we're trying this because, you know, I saw this presentation or I saw this online. I was trying about what better ways to better ways to engage y'all, make it more fun to learn, et cetera. Um, most students will go like, OK, yeah, sure, we'll try this because um, you're not the first teacher to have tried something and had it bomb between all the eyes <laughs> and especially the last four years. Goodness. Right. right. Um, but then also, um, like most anything else, start small. Right. So, oh, I've got this great idea. I want to completely overhaul my calculus class. Oh, wait, maybe I'll start small by introducing um, just a little bit of this. Now, that gets a little weird sometimes or hard sometimes, depending on the scope of the things. Right. Um, so in my case, as I said, I gave it as a sort of a optional review thing and just had a couple of created a couple of quizzes that would tie the materials to each other. And then once I, oh, okay, yeah, this is starting to work. I could sort of expand what I was doing. So I mentioned I do memos in class. I started with, okay, every group's got to write this, answer this one memo question and read all the various answers to it, whatever. As, and then as I said, okay, now I got a feel for how that time frame is going to work. So maybe I can add a few more questions that are about the same scope and assign them out um, or the, that sort of thing. So that's, that's uh, some of the some suggestions. Um, one of the others would be, this is much easier to do if you can find another colleague who's also willing to take this, <laughs> take, a, take a flying leap with you. Um, because then you've got somebody you can bounce ideas off of, but also you have somebody at that point, oh, wait, I need to create six quizzes. Hey, well, I can create three, you can create three, and then we'll swap. Right. Um, and that's, that's always been much nicer, uh, especially now with, with all the internet and electronic resources and stuff. 
you're probably not the first person to do this. You can find somebody to do with this with you. Um, I've, I've actually found, so if you're not on math Twitter, which is Twitter, but you just carefully follow mathematicians, not political junkies and other things. <laughs> um, there's actually a great community on math Twitter, of mathematicians who, who engage in conversations and who are willing to, you know, if you throw a question out there like, oh yeah, I think so-and-so did this or whatever. And I've, I've run into several faculty members and we've swapped and gotten all sorts of things. I've never met them in person, but uh, we've met online and we've interacted and so forth. And so um, that would be the other thing is, is don't be afraid to kind of reach out and look for collaborators because there's probably a lot of other people out there also looking to do the same thing if you can find them. Um, and like we always tell our students, start early. <laughs> you know, hey, I want to do this. So maybe I need to start this for the fall because that gives me a summer to work on things or whatever and not, oh, wait, spring semester starts in eight days? Sure, I'll try that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, if you mentioned you've, you've been playing games um, before you ever used a game in the classroom, but what would you say to a teacher that doesn't really play video games, that's um, not as familiar with technology um, today, but they're really interested in trying out um, the use of a game in their class? Um, well, so there's, there's a couple of things to it. Um, one, there's a book by Keith Devlin, who's a who's a fairly well-known mathematician, was the NPR math guy. And it's, um, oh, now just mathematics education for new era is the name of it. He talks about this idea of using video games for learning. This was five, 10 years ago, I think he wrote the book. Um, and, and so part of the things he mentions are, what do you really want students to do? You don't want students to try the problem once, see that they got the wrong answer and throw their hands up and go, oh, I'm done. I can't get this. <laughs> right. But unfortunately, we've kind of that's kind of been ingrained into students. What you really want students to do is what you hope right mathematicians do. Oh, I didn't get that problem. Well, what did I miss? Oh, I didn't get this. No, that doesn't seem right. Right. You keep sort of banging your head against it until it finally clicks. You're like, oh, yeah, this is this is what I needed. And and oh, by the way, you realize later I learned a lot of stuff with all those failed attempts or mistakes. And that's, in essence, video games. If, you, if you've ever played them, students, as I constantly am telling my son and, and others, you know, <laughs> yeah, okay, you may be great at, you know, pretend warfare army game one, but, you know, in real life, you don't hit the reset button, get extra lives. You, <laughs> so so, so your, your strategy of run out there, my, my, my junior high, well, I, I sixth grade son whose strategy in every war game is just to stand up and start shooting because hey i'll get an extra life well okay you're but not <laughs> right and so so to that end right you want students in a sense if they're frustrated to want to keep banging their head against it until they finally get it and that's often what happens with video games is that for some reason if they're in that scenario they're willing to beat the final level boss or play that final puzzle six, eight, 10 times till they get it. Whereas if you tend to give them a homework problem, they'll try it once. And then if you say, well, it's the wrong answer, like, eh, whatever. Now you can get over some of that. Um, and I think some of that is um, at least <laughs> I'm, I'm of the age, right? Before online homework, the answers to the odds were in the back of the book, right? So you'd work the, you work, work through the odd problem, look at the back. I didn't get 17. What did I do wrong? Right. And I think um, that's where some of the, while I like online homework and stuff, we've kind of got lost some of that with students, this instant gratification and, oh, I write or wrong sort of a thing. Um, and I've actually started incorporating some of that into my, my classroom with, okay, show that the answer to this problem is 16 or 42 or whatever. And, and students with, like, oh, wait, how is it? How is it 16? And the, they'll keep doing the same thing. They'll go back, they'll double check their work. They'll look carefully. Where did I make a mistake? What did I do wrong? This sort of a thing. Um, and those are the skills really that you need in a video game. And so it's not necessarily that it's in a video game. It's just the particular skills seem to come out for the people who like playing video games um, that they don't, they, they tend to stay more hidden in a typical classroom setting. Um, so, so, if you're if you never played a video or you just don't play video games, 
but you're not used to that, I would say think back to those times or even try that with your students. Just say, you know, show that the answer to this problem is, is 42 or 12 or whatever, right? And let them work at it. And, and they'll make, students will typically make a mistake and they're like, wait, how does it, wait, wait, and they'll go back and forth, back and forth sort of thing. So that's, that's the, one of the big hooks with video games is it allows them to keep trying and allows them to eventually figure out their mistakes and go forward. Um, and then it's, it's all in a setting, right, where I'm not having to grade every attempt. <laughs> they're getting the feedback as they go. And then at the end, they're, they either get the success and the, and the frustration. Yeah, and, if, and as you mentioned earlier, the mastery thing, if somebody gets it the first time because they're totally getting it, great. And if somebody else needs a four, six, seven times before they get it, then they get it. Do, do you know what? You just brought up a really, really good point I've never considered. Um, although I've, I've known about that, but it's a very fact what you just mentioned, where if you give the traditional homework to a student, so like, okay, I'm on assignment, in class assignment, you solve these equations or look at this text. Well, then they do that. They hand it to the faculty, to the teacher, who then has to review it, grade it, or even if it's an ungraded assignment, give, provide feedback. Well, if a student gets it wrong the first time, so they get feedback, um, and worst case scenario is they get an F. So they do it again, hand it back to the teacher. And if it's wrong again, again, they get another F. There comes a point where both the student and the teacher are extremely frustrated because now the teacher is doing more and more and more work. The student isn't really getting it. And so they eventually leave that, right? Um, and so in, in college, at least, we see that students just drop out. They don't take the classes anymore. Um, in high school, that's, you know, obviously a little bit more challenging um, to do for a student just to, to drop a class. Whereas in a game, to your point, it's both students that struggle, where if they can do this 10 times, 15 times over and over until they get it, that's where it really helps. But the faculty, the teacher, doesn't have to grade 10 times their attempt and provide the feedback because the game does it. And you're right. And even in the online homework systems today, we don't, we don't have a system like that where I can try and try and try. And I get feedback. All I get is, yeah, right or wrong, or, or here's the right answer. And that sometimes helps. But if there's a step I'm missing in the way I've done my calculation, for example, then just knowing the answer may not really be that helpful either, right? And so getting that feedback and then if you think about, you know, imagine a student, just a single student in a class, um, you know, 30, 30 questions and that tries them 10 times each and you have to provide feedback on each one. <laughs> I mean, it would really help students, obviously tremendously but the just the time um we, we just don't have the time uh, yeah. for doing that it, but, interestingly uh, at the at the last amatic conference i was at that was actually one of the things several of the um, big homework systems were kind of piloting or showcasing was a responsive feedback system that would provide appropriate help and it was of course it with any sort of automated system it wasn't perfect but that was one of the things they were hey not it's not we're trying to progress beyond just right or wrong to hey it looks like in this step or whatever right and so that was yeah it, it's it's this sort of a thing where the more we can engage the student and get them kind of feeling like they're involved but also not add to our workload I mean, this, and again this is this is where this came in um, right. Yeah, if, if you're old enough to remember the Choose Your Own Adventure books, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've bounced around the idea of trying to do that in calculus, but then I keep thinking, man, that would be such a mess to grade and to <laughs> keep track of where everybody is and how do you how do you write a test for that? And, uh, but, oh, that would be a cool idea. So, so, so maybe in my next life, <laughs> my retirement job. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, before we go, any last thoughts or comments for anybody 
Uh, let's go to watch this. Um, well, again, it, it, while we've talked so certainly about video games, and certainly there's there's that aspect of this, um, and then, then the whole idea of gamification has been a thing for a while. Um, I would say that more generally, for any kind of so-called alternative assessment, I would say go for it. I would think, if nothing else, we've learned in the last couple of three years, standard questions are not that challenging, exciting for students. Um, and also, we need questions that are more Google resistant, <laughs> basically, <laughs> uh, because otherwise, you know, and, and so that's one of the nicer things about this is that, yeah, you could sort of maybe get somebody to play the game for you. Okay, sure. But now you're, that's, hey, you want to play this six hour calculus game for me? That's, that's hard to find somebody to do. Whereas, <laughs> hey, let me find the, you know, 30 seconds, I can find the right searches to answer this problem for me real quick. Um, and so the more alternative assessment type things we as a, as a community can come up with, I think the better it fits our students and the better it serves our students, because it, it really challenges them and forces them to understand the concepts. And how do those concepts apply out? Because everything that I've ever encountered, that's, that's really what the employers and the, the agencies in need is students, people who can adapt, take these skills and adapt them to the new situations. And so while it doesn't have to be video games, I would, I would strongly encourage anybody to think about alternative assessments. And the same thing, do little steps, grow into this. Um, but boy, it's a lot nicer when you've got something like this already built that's well done. You can kind of frame around that. Um, and I knew it was, I really knew it was a big hit when was one of my good, really good students, um, he made a five on the BC, but he was taking calculus again just to have a good solid GPA. Um, finished the game. And he's like, all right, so can I get the next game after this? Uh, I said, well, they don't, they don't have that yet. They're working on it. Oh, man, no, I want to know what's next in the story. Ah! Um, and so this, this was really the hook. He's, he's been interested in, in that. Every once in a while, every year, I get an email from him. Do you know? And I keep sending him to the website and say, hey, well, you know, check this, see how they're doing. Um, but that's the sort of a thing. You know, it's really nice if you can package with, something that's already created and figure that out. Because again, it leaves more time for the, the more challenging stuff where really it's at, right? Word problems. And how do, how do I take this messy problem and fit the mathematics into it sort right. of thing? Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to try something. Just let your students know, hey, we're going to try this. And if it, if it bombs, then we'll figure it out and go from there. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate um, you taking the time. Um, speaking with me today and this was really really helpful I know that uh, many teachers faculty uh, will greatly benefit um, from your experience and wisdom oh well thanks it was a lot of fun always fun to talk mathematics and teaching mathematics well that's it that that was the recorded video I hope you enjoyed that um, again let me know if you prefer a higher quality video then we'll reshoot it or if you if it's fine and you'd rather us spend time on interviewing um, other folks let us know who you would like to hear from um, and if you what content you would like to see on this channel um, please leave it in the comments below don't forget to like um, the video and to subscribe to the channel thank you so much and have a wonderful wonderful day